So a bit of a background on what correlations are. So I have these different sales over these different years. I want to see if there's any kind of relationship here because we had these homes that sold in the, in the Midwest and we have these homes that sold in the South. You might think um, maybe if, if the housing markets improved or whatever, economic activity improved, that people are buying more houses kind of all over the U.S. And so I might expect that these two things might move at, at the same, uh, you know, they both might rise at the same time or fall at the same time. Maybe um, people over this time period, maybe people from the Midwest were moving to the South. And so maybe there is fewer homes being sold in the Midwest and more homes being sold in the South. So I don't quite have an idea how this relationship is going to look. So I just grabbed the, um, just to, because I have to show everybody again. I took the housing data from the census and I grabbed 1963 to 78 just to get some random stuff. And I got the sales for the Midwest and the South over that same period. Put it over here. And I just, I'll show you how I plotted it again. I want to see what the relationship is between these two. And I'll do it like this. So the Midwest is my blue line and it seems pretty flat over that decade-ish. And my sales in the South, well, started out a little bit flat, but increased at the end. And I guess the Midwest did similar things too. So I could sort of look at these two trends by looking at these two lines by themselves. Another thing I can do though is to look just at the data like this without the years in there and do some dots like this. And this isn't actually the South now. But for every, you know, when the Midwest had this value of 134, the South's value was 199. And so that point is, uh, where would that be about? It's probably right here. Yeah. So this little dot here represents this 1963 year where I had, I mean, it based, it's kind of right in the middle of the Midwest values because the Midwest sales went from 97 up to 162. So this value of 134 is kind of right in the middle of there. And it's a little bit on the lower end when the sales of 199 is a little bit on the low end of the South sales. So I'm looking at, I'm kind of putting all this data in here like this and I'm seeing that, well, I've got some, it looks like whenever the sales in the Midwest increased or were higher, that they also had higher sales in the South too. When I have low sales in the Midwest, like this 97, then it also tended to be associated with the low number of sales in the South, 175. When I had, you know, the highest amount of sales in the Midwest, which was the 162, then, well, that was associated with a pretty high amount of sales in the South too, 317. So I'm kind of, I can look at my data like this and see that, again, it seems like whenever home sales rose in the Midwest, they also rose in the South, or you could tell the story the other way. Whenever, whenever home sales were high in the South, they seem to be high in the Midwest too. It looks like, again, they sort of are moving in the same direction. So when sales in the Midwest rise, then sales in the South are rising too. When sales in the Midwest are low, sales in the South are low also. So what the correlation does, the correlations basically tell you whether the data that you're plotting, whether the little dots you're looking at have a, a direct relationship with each other or a negative relationship with each other. The data that we have here for these home sales, it looks like there's this, this upward slope to it. So again, whenever the Midwest sales rose, it seemed like the South sales were rising too. Whenever the Midwest sales were low, the South sales were low. So it looks like I have kind of relationships that are sort of near on the bottom part of this chart where the relationship between X and Y seem to be upward sloping. If the correlation is positive, like they're positive correlations here. It's telling you that the, the relationship between those two variables is positive or is direct. When one rises, the other rises. When one falls, the other falls. There could be other types of data where the relationship is negative, where when one variable increases, the other variable decreases. And so I see that kind of in the, the upper two left pictures here, where it seems like there's a negative relationship between those two variables. And that gets reflected in a correlation that is negative. You can probably barely see it, but there's a negative sign out front of both of these correlation values. So one thing the correlation tells you is if, if the correlation is positive, then it's telling you that 
the x variable and the y variable both are sort of moving in the same direction. If your correlation is negative, it's telling you that they're moving in opposite directions. Whenever one rises, the other tends to fall. So that's nice to know in and of itself. But it also gives you a sense of how tightly packed the two variables are with each other. So if I look at the actual values that are here, not just the signs of these things, but the values that are there, well, some of them are, the data is kind of really tightly packed together. So on this bottom right picture, the relationship between X and Y is, is almost a straight line. I mean, you can almost tell exactly what's going to happen to Y if X is a particular value because the data is so tightly packed in this line. If I move one graph to the left, I've got a correlation of 0.9, which is a little less. I should say this too. The range for your correlation values is going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. So a negative 1 means that they're negatively related, and you basically have like this downward sloping line where the data is really tightly packed together around that line. Uh, and the other extreme is your correlation being positive 1, meaning that it's upward sloping and your data is very tightly packed around that upward sloping line. If you have a correlation of 0, that means that there's really no discernible relationship between those two. When one of them increases, we don't really know what's going to happen with the other one. When the y variable increases or decreases, we can't really say what the x variable is going to do. So in this upper left, or sorry, this upper right chart, there's no real discernible relationship between the x and the y. And so the correlation that I get is equal to zero, meaning that it doesn't appear to be positively related, it doesn't appear to be negatively related, and I just can't really tell how they're related at all. But then some of these other pictures, again, when I have this correlation of positive one, well, it's upward sloping and there's, it's perfectly described. There's no sort of variation in the data. The data isn't really spread out at all. It's just perfectly in this line like this. At the point nine, it's pretty close to being tightly packed in a single line, but it's spread out a little bit. The data is kind of spread out a little bit. Um, if when I do the upper left, where the correlation is negative 0.9, well, it's negatively sloped. And again, the data is pretty tightly packed, but not completely. There's still a little bit of variation and wiggle room that's there. When I go to the correlation of 0.5, it's positive, upward sloping, but I can see that the data is more dispersed than it was at the point 0.9 and definitely when it was at the, the, one, the positive 1. When I go to the correlation of negative 0.5, Again, it's downward sloping, clearly, but again, the data is still kind of spread out somewhat. It's not as nicely packed as it was when it was negative 0.9. So I have our sort of scatter plot here. And again, it kind of looks like there's an upward slope to it. And if I wanted to, I could cheat a little bit and put a trend line in there to see for sure. Okay, here's my trend line. It seems to be positively sloped. So my guess is that my correlation would be positive. It's certainly not packed really tightly around this line, though. So I'm assuming that my correlation is going to be positive, but I, I doubt it's going to be 1. It's, it's probably not going to be 0.9 either. But I want to actually figure it out. So in Excel, to find the correlation, it's um, equals C-O-R-R-E-L. Corel, and it kind of tells you there, returns the correlation coefficient between two data sets. So then I need to tell it what data sets, well, what two data sets I'm talking about. So I can go in and highlight one of my data sets and then hit the comma to get the next data set entered. And then I'll close it off with my other parentheses. So it's going to figure out what's the correlation between the, the Midwest, the blue data here, and the South housing, or the, I guess that's red data that's there too. I hit enter, it's positive, which is what I expected. The trend line kind of verifies that too. And it's 0.6, so a little bit better than the 0.5 that I had in my picture over here. But certainly not close to the 0.9s or, or the 1 or something like that. The reason that I'm having you look for the, I mean, I'm having you calculate the elasticity for the sales is because, well, Census is doing this, the seasonal adjustments. And what I'm wanting you guys to figure out first is, is that even helpful to do that? Is there a seasonal adjustment something that seems to be worthwhile? Is it, is it noticeable? So I wanted you to figure out, well, take, take just the regular unadjusted data, and then after they've done the seasonal adjustment to it, 
figure out what the relationship is between those two sets of data. Um, do they both sort of move in the same direction? I guess it would be really weird if they moved in opposite directions, but how closely related is the unadjusted data with the adjusted data? So you've got the correlation that will give you a sense of that, and you've got the scatter plot too that will give you a sense of it too. So it's kind of nice to have to do both of those at the same time. So not only, I mean, the scatter plot will kind of tell you, will give you a better visual image of if the relationship between those two variables is positive or negative. And the correlation itself kind of gives you a sense of how dispersed the data is around that particular trend line. So again, the point of asking in the question is just to see whether doing that seasonal adjustment is going to make any kind of a difference.